So now for the moment of truth. In this video, we're going to take our LEGO Digital Designer model that we've built in previous lessons, and we're gonna bring it into the Virtual Robotics Toolkit. That is, we're gonna take this static 3D image, and that's all this thing is right now, is just a fancy picture, uh, and we're gonna uh, animate it and add physical attributes to it so we can control it in a simulated environment. You're probably wondering how that's all going to happen, so grab yourself a seat and pay attention because this process, although as complex as it is, actually only takes a couple of minutes using the Virtual Robotics Toolkit from Cognition Robotics. So here with the file, I'm going to go up here to the File menu and I'm going to choose this option here to Export Model. And what we want to do here is we actually want to save this file as a LDRAW file. You'll recall in an earlier video that we installed the LDRAW all-in-one library. That is going to be the intermediary that's going to facilitate this exchange. So I'm going to choose LDRAW. I'm going to keep my robot name. I happen to like it, my shiny new robot. And I'm going to hit save. Now in this particular example, of course, I always like to try my own material out before I make a video to see if it works. So I'm just going to override my old uh, file. Okay, great. So I'm going to minimize my screen and I'm going to come here into the Virtual Robotics Toolkit from Cognation. So this is our non-LEGO made software. Open the program up. And in a second here, we're going to see a welcome screen. Now, it doesn't matter which project you happen to pick. Um, I happen to like this cleanup challenge. So that's the one I'm going to use. But you can use whichever one you happen to like best. I'm going to create the project. If it asks you to override an existing file, just say yes. And here we are in the cleanup project. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to delete the sample project robot. So I've selected the robot by left clicking on it and I'm going to press the delete key and it disappears. Up here on the toolbar, I have the option to import a robot. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come to the desktop and I'm going to find that LDRAW file that I just exported from LDD and hit import. What happens now is the Virtual Robotics Toolkit starts parsing our 3D model, trying to figure out what all the different pieces are. Some of our pieces in our model are going to move freely, like our wheels, um, gears, for example, if we had them. Uh, other uh, components in the model are going to be pretty rigidly connected, meaning they're not going to move at all. So the first uh, step in this process here is to identify the components that make up the robot. So we can see that in our simple uh, five minute bot, we have basically a main body or a chassis that constitutes probably 90% of this. I have here a small caster wheel at the very back. And then I have a left and a right wheel. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to give these components meaningful names. Now this happens to be a very simple robot, um, so you know it'd be totally fine just to leave things named the way they are. But you can imagine if you're building something very complex, like say a robotic arm, you might have many of these components, you know, upwards of 20, 30, 40 components, and it can become difficult to work with your model if you don't know what those components are by looking at them in the list. So here what I'm going to do is rather than calling the main body of the robot component one, I'm going to call it chassis so that I know what this is when I look at the list. I'm going to call this my caster wheel. Then I have my left wheel. So let's go left wheel. And finally I have my right wheel. I'll hit next to go to the next part of the process here. 
What's happening here is now that we've identified the different pieces that make up our model, um, the Virtual Robotics Toolkit starts to identify any special pieces that need extra consideration. For example, our motors and sensors. Now this robot doesn't have any sensors, but it does have two motors that are controlling the left and right wheel. And so what we're going to have to do uh, is, just as if we were working with the real robot, we're going to have to assign these motors to ports on the EV3 Intelligent Brick. So what I can see here is I have a left motor. So I'm going to say, call this my left motor. And then I have a right motor on the other side. And now for ports, it really doesn't matter which ones I choose. So I'll take my B port here and I'll have it as my right motor and I'll have my C port and I'll use it as my left motor. And again, had I had any sensors in my model they would show up here and I would be able to assign them to the incoming numbered ports but since I don't I will hit next and this is really uh, probably the most critical uh, step in the process is uh, assigning the front of your robot all of the driving controls that we use to move our robot around are based on the simulator knowing which end of your robot is the front. And it will guess that the front of the robot here is where the arrow is pointing, which in this case is true. But in certain examples, you may be importing a robot and your robot might be facing another direction, for example, the left or the right. And if that's the case, then we just click here on the arrow key to make that assignment. Nine times out of ten, at the conclusion of the import process, if your robot isn't able to be controlled using the keyboard keys, it's because uh, somehow you goofed on this step. So get that one right. So in this example, this is the front of the robot. I'm going to go to my left motor and I'm going to assign a set of keyboard controls to drive it. You can see here I have a couple of different options. I can use either the WASD uh, keyboard keys, which are very commonly used when playing a computer game. Uh, if you're more familiar with using the arrow keys, we can control our left motor that way. And if I happen to have had a um, generic game controller, like a Logitech controller or something like that, I could also assign the game controller to control my robot's movement. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to choose the left wheel WASD keyboard keys to control the left motor. We can see here that basically it creates a keyboard mapping. So, for example, when the W key is pressed down, it's going to move the motor forward a set number of RPM. When the key is released, in other words, when the key pops back up, it's going to stop that movement. And again, we can see a similar keyboard mapping for the A, S, and D keys, which um, will have their own sets of uh, RPM uh, mapped to them, respectively. Click on here on the right motor, and I'm going to choose the right wheel uh, WASD to control it. And so in effect, what I have here is when I press down the W key, for example, it's going to move both the left motor and the right motor uh, in the same direction at 100 RPM. When I press the S key, which is our backwards key, or we will how our robot will move in reverse, we can see that it moves the robot at minus 100 RPM. So in other words, it's gonna the, the motor is gonna move in the opposite direction for both the right motor and the left motor. And there you have it. So I'm gonna hit next. Uh, the simulator is going to do some last minute checks here just to make sure that everything is constrained properly. It's going to flex our model. And in a second here, we're going to see a message stating that our robot is ready to be used. And there we go. So I'm going to click finish. Now the default placement of the robot at the conclusion of the import process is to put it in the center of the map. Usually that's a pretty good choice. In this particular project, it's not such a great choice. But uh, let's hit play and see what happens. Pop. Everything pops. Things break. Um, and that's because our robot is real now. And how do I know that? Well, if I move my robot out and I go up here to the render menu and choose physics, we can see how my model now um, lights up like a Christmas tree. And the reason for that is because of all of the physical attributes have been assigned uh, to each and every component in our model to offer a completely authentic um, experience to driving and controlling the real thing. For example, if I come up here to my object properties dialog, we can see now that my model has things 
like a mass, a uh, center of mass, how different physical forces such as gravity and friction affect it, how it will react in collisions. If I take a look at the properties of my motors, we can see that there are things here like brake force and brake torque, um, drive body and various tolerances. So let's turn off our physics highlighting and hit play to control our robots. I'm gonna hit play. When the play button's pressed, the simulator uh, kicks into gear and I get this green bar on the screen. And I can now begin driving and controlling my robot using the keyboard keys, which are W, A, S, and D. And you can see that this robot doesn't turn so well and that's because our back wheel here is tightly constrained uh, using these two connecting bushes. So if I was gonna rebuild this robot again, I might do some things differently so I could give it uh, a little bit more fluid movement when turning side to side. But uh, as long as we're going forwards and backwards, everything seems to be just fine. <clears throat> now, um, there is one other thing I can do here to turn on my keyboard display. So if I forget what buttons are controlling my robot, I can actually go up here to the file menu, go to preferences, and there is an option here. I just gotta find it. Let's go under other to coordinates display enable, uh, controls display, keyboard controls, and camera controls, and I'll hit OK. And you can see now when I drive my robot, the controls for it light up down here. And that I also get a set of camera controls that will help me navigate around this project. So for example, if I right click with my mouse, I can look around. Uh, if I hold down the left control key and right click at the same time, I can truck or uh, pan my camera as it, as it would be called in LEGO Digital Designer. Of course, I can hold down the left alt key and right click and I can orbit around my creation. And then I can use my middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out.